I, I think, too, this ties into the globalization of the academy, because I think one of the things that has been lost in some of the changes that the academy is making, its expansion, connect with other issues around globalization. And, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting to look back at the time that Oscar So White and Me Too were really gaining traction in America, Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump were traveling around America talking about how much globalization has screwed everyone over. You know, Brexit was happening in England. And you can look at other movements around the world. There's almost this parallel universe that Hollywood exists in where globalization has always been this good thing. <laughs> and, you know, there's not... There's nothing bad that ever happened with it. And again, it's a complicated issue. I think bringing and, and bringing in more international filmmakers and talents, as well as recognizing the achievements of films from around the world is a great thing. On the other hand, I think there's reason to be concerned on a few different levels. We've already mentioned how economics are not part of the new rules and the new kind of... Uh, programs that the Oscars are, are making to be more inclusive. It's also worth wondering if some of the negative impacts of globalization, things like, you know, the loss of manufacturing capacity, jobs being shipped overseas, the kind of hollowing out of America and indeed many economies on a material level doesn't find parallels in filmmaking. If there isn't kind of a cultural hollowing out as Hollywood pursues more franchise films that are more meant for international audiences mm. rather than domestic audiences. If domestic stories and domestic filmmakers who are working in the indie level with very little money, films like To Leslie, are disempowered, mm -hmm. have less funding. If we might be risking, you know, the kind of domestic indie film industries in these various countries... And I think that's just not part of the conversation in a way that's very worrying. I think we should be asking these questions. Mm. But I also think we should kind of perhaps question the wisdom of this kind of pairing of both globalization and being more responsive to calls on the domestic level for more inclusion and diversity. Because those are not necessarily complementary things. And in, in fact, mm -hmm. in some ways, they're very contradictory I mean, if you mm -hmm. think about it, if the Academy wants to make this soft power play for global audiences or, or, or global industries, then you're going to have more films from other countries getting nominated for, let's say, Best Picture or Best inter International Picture, perhaps even more actors from other countries being nominated. That's going to make this already in incredibly crowded field that's full of controversy every year over who's nominated, even more crowded. So it's like, okay, we want more, let's say, African-American actors nominated or African-American filmmakers. It's like, at the same time, we're going to broaden the number of filmmakers that we're going to, you know, be part of this uh, to everyone in the entire world. <laughs> it's like, has anyone not considered that that kind of seems totally contradictory? Mm. You know, uh, it just right. seems bizarre to me that this kind of passes without. And again, I think there's a way to do this. But I think like with other sorts of institutions, it's very difficult to globalize without risking losing touch with the local, with with your local kind of audience, your you know, local filmmakers, local industries and as with other trends in globalization, it does seem to empower the already powerful, the already rich, at the disservice of, of more independent, smaller scale uh, filmmakers and films. So I don't know. I, I see that as a potential issue that I don't really see being discussed. Yeah, it's, it's not really being discussed. Um, and it kind of goes back to your earlier point. And I think that, you know, I mean, this is such a huge discussion. You're almost describing like, you know, models of society, you know, the, right. the wide society or the narrow society and which one is more effective, right? And what happens when you get too large or things like this, it's, it's almost like a societal question. Right. But I was also reminded, maybe this isn't, this is off point, but 
again, I do. I, I think the 1970s are like the peak of American cinema. And what was happening mm. then is a lot of directors were hiring cinematographers from other countries yeah. to give a different look to their movies. And so it felt like there already was a kind of internationalization going on in terms of content because, you know, the, the film needed that, that eye, it needed a different view, it needed a, a different perspective. Right. But what's happening now is, is my concern that everything seems to be litigated. And mm. again, it's almost like a, a, the politics has become a politics of like a U.S. Congress mile, you know, style <laughs> of, you know, kind of litigating yeah. what is the law that's going to be passed. But I think we've all become very hyper politicized. And so it's just touching everything right now. So, yeah, I don't I don't know. It's it, it's a problem. Well, I just want to add one more point there. Sure. Just on, on top of what you said, there is a long history of Hollywood. In fact, the, the majority of Hollywood's history has been one of kind of international collaboration. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go back to the silent film era, if you go back to like all the, the German emigres who came to Hollywood, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, like people sure. like Fritz Lang. Uh, if you look at all the English and Irish actors who work in big Hollywood mm -hmm. movies, there's there's an incredibly rich history of international collaboration that I think Hollywood has done very well, and I certainly would not like to see go away at all. I, I think that elements of this internationalization, uh, in a way, it's kind of redundant because it was already happening. Mm -hmm. And my fear is that it's it's being done more on kind of a corporate level than on, exactly. on an artistic level. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you mentioned Hollywood's quota thing that it's trying to implement. What is exactly the, the quota system that's about to be implemented? Uh, to the best of my mind, you have to either make a movie about a story that features a story about an underrepresented group or issue, feature someone from an underrepresented group in front of the camera, or have enough people kind of on the crew Mm -hmm. And on the production team, in order to get nominated, yeah, for best picture, nominated. in order to be yeah. eligible, and it's um, yeah, eligible. The way yeah. Hollywood is today, I mean, I was reading a Times article on this the other day. Um, you know, uh, apparently, like for example, The Irishman, nineteen seventeen, like they would still be eligible because of the people they had behind the camera. Mm -hmm. So it does seem somewhat flexible, but. Yeah, it's definitely worth discussing, I think, in terms of, you know, some of the issues we've talked about. 